No one truly understands an event until they understand the people involved. And nowhere is this more true than in the Christmas story. What really happened when Jesus Christ was born? Welcome to Season 2, Episode 46 of Word for the Week. Join us as we discuss the top five people in the Christmas story. Okay, let's start by talking, quote, Christmas spirit and Christmas cheer for a moment. It seems that even religious Christmases focus on highlights like the second half of Luke 2, 34. Yeah. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men of goodwill. Well, good word, will towards men. <laughs> All right, depending on your translation. Yes. But the, that whole idea of goodwill and, and peace, and understandably so, because considering how things seem to go in, in uh, the world today, everyone hungers for at least one day where the big <laughs> objective is to have some uh, cheerfulness and kindness. So yeah, right. we understand that. Although, if we look at the Christmas season, in reality, that doesn't seem to be the case. <laughs> yeah, well, let's, uh, you know, I often thought uh, we need to do after Christmas a, a quick series interview, Man on the Street, with retailers, uh, you know, and people who work in retail, <laughs> see what, yeah. what stories we get there. Yeah. But um, that being said, we, we can strive for cheer and kindness. That That's good, but honestly... Uh, in the human sense, we're not very good at manufacturing it. So right, right. today we're actually going to go back to the birth of Christ and uh, what the real cheer and spirit is all about. So. Well, last week we looked at how the birth of Christ was actually a 7th century conversation. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. It was a call to choice right. as much as a promise. Yes. So the Messiah's birth was a warning as much as was a hope. Yeah, if we go back to, and what we're talking about, and this is Isaiah, 700 years before Christ, right. uh, see how the Messiah is prophesied, how he's portrayed there, and, and he's as much judge as he is Savior, and as much a stumbling stone as mm. he is the source of light, and that carries on right into our New Testament. So. Right. But that's just one facet of a very profound story. So today we set up another angle looking at the top five lives involved in the birth of Christ. Yeah, because uh, the thought being, if we look into the background of each of the uh, main people in this, um, that uh, we'll understand the story better. And of course, right. we're going into a uh, biblical source, mm -hmm. obviously, and then uh, maybe to some degree established uh, tradition from the early church where it looks like it really does fill something in. And uh, just to be clear, in some of these we say lives, it's actually more than five lives, but at least five individuals or group of individuals is what mm -hmm. we're talking. So let's uh, start. And how we're going to do this, we're going to start with the most obvious <laughs> and work our way down. And okay. people are already, uh, already guessing on what the first one is. So th with that being said, number one is... Mary. Here's a summary of a passage that explains her story. Luke 1, 26-38. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting was this. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest and the Lord God. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So <clears throat> that's the, uh, the basic, that's our signature uh, scripture that we're looking at to to explain Mary. So right. let's go on now and we'll explore some of the facts. What do we really know about Mary, the mother of Jesus? 
All right. In Hebrew, her name she she would have answered to is actually Maryam. Miriam. Miriam, which means bitter. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I thought about this as I was looking it up. Is you know what a thing you, you name your kid bitter. <laughs> what, right. What's that all about? But there may have been a. Um, I, I think a prophetic tone to this because if we look at it, she is the most blessed among women, but yet uh, as a mother, she's going to um, right. suffer one of the most bitter challenges a mother could ever face. The horrible death of her son. And right. tradition says that Mary was the daughter <clears throat> of a couple who had her later in life. Her parents were said to be Anne and jo Joachim. Joachim. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an interesting name, as it means raised by Yahweh. Yeah, so once I again, that was kind, really cool. <laughs> kind of a prophetic tone yeah, to that. Yeah. And and Mary is said to be, you know, just an ordinary teenage girl uh, right. a, at the time, of course, right. from this peripheral town of Nazareth. But here's the question for you that as we look at okay. who we're saying is this ordinary teen, did Mary believe that mm -hmm. her son was actually the Messiah? That he was, in fact, the Christ. That's been a question of a lot of debate. And one school of thought holds Mary central in the ministry of Christ his whole life, mm -hmm. while the other puts her almost completely to the sidelines. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had talked before about this that I, I just can imagine. I mean, she had nine months before he was born. Nine right. months to think of all these things that she's heard and... Um, well, be before he's even <laughs> around to, to you know. right. Well, in nine months with, <clears throat> I'm pregnant, and I didn't know I met, didn't mess around with anyone. So what's going on? Yeah, um, all yeah. these things would have been just running through her head. I mean, the, she was a regular teenage girl, and I remember what I was like as a teenage girl, and <laughs> I. Yeah. So, but uh, luckily, uh, this <laughs> what's in your situation? This was only Mary. Yeah. I know. Uh, but um, here's what I propose as far as the question, because mm -hmm. it's a good one. I mean, all the time, because uh, people will poke at the scripture like, and say, right. no, she didn't, and yes, she did, and to the extreme. And, and I would say neither is right. Mm -hmm. Or, in a sense, maybe both is right. So, uh, And here's why. If That's I, cheating. <laughs> it, it is. I sound like we started watching Babylon 5 now, and it's like the Vorlons. Yeah, you know, right. it's like. It is right, but it is wrong. Uh, but I'm going to have you read. Um, Luke is one of the best books to give us some snippets of who these people are. Mm -hmm. So from chapter two, I'm going to get you to read a succession of little snippets. And then we'll take a look and see, well, what, what do you think? What's your impression of where Mary stood on this very important question? Okay. I'm going to go first to Luke 2, 17 through 19. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Luke 2, 34 and 35. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also. Which comes through her name, right? <laughs> right, right. That the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Then finally Luke two forty nine and 50, And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Okay, so just as you look at that in quick succession, what's your initial impression from those as far as... Well, yeah, well, there's no question that she would have been fully convinced later in life. Mm -hmm. She saw Jesus appear in the upper room and ascend to heaven. Yeah, that's so pretty that, convincing. Right, yeah. it is. And then before that, Scripture seems to paint a picture of her pondering events in her heart. So yeah. she seems to have been a deep thinker. You right, know, she was <laughs> more deep thinking than me when I was deep young. thinking as and a teenager. I think she believed Jesus was the Messiah just. She just wasn't sure exactly what all that really meant, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, because if you look at her life, I mean, here's this young Jewish girl. It's obvious she was quite devout. 
So she would have accepted not only the law, but the traditions of the people. Mm -hmm. And the traditional thought of the Messiah was he was going to come in fanfare. He was going to come as this king of the kings. King, right, you know, right. this. Big. So when, when she has this experience with an angel, she's carrying the Messiah. So now here's a nobody who is carrying the the great Jewish Messiah, right. then she would have realized, hey, everything I thought I knew just went out the window. I think that pondering and putting into her heart, she was working this stuff out, processing as it all unfolded. So right. she believed, but she just wasn't sure what it all meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's really <clears throat> wild when you think about it. Yes. Um, and Mary was just an average girl, but she did have some family connections. Yes, she did. She was connected. <laughs> Her cousin Elizabeth was the wife of the priest Zechariah, and they would be the parents of a child who was prophesied to clear the way for the Messiah. The person we know is John the Baptist. Right. As a matter of fact, Jesus and John the Baptist were second cousins. Mm -hmm. I actually had to go on Google to look down on the family tree. What do you call this person who is... You know the the uh, the cousin of a cousin of the, your mother and all this. So what do you call that? But technically, he was second, second cousin, cousin. Right. and John was six months older than Jesus uh, in earthly terms. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of Elizabeth, uh, most of us know how this goes. Mary um, is coming up, and 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 the baby John leaps in Elizabeth's stomach in joy at the coming of. Mary and all the right. ladies who have ever been pregnant go, oh, I know what that feels like. <laughs> yeah. But he leaps with joy. There's this wonderful confirmation from Elizabeth on Mary's baby. And then Mary is what is called Mary's song is the next thing to, to transpire. Right. That's the section of scripture, Luke 1, 46 through 55. Right? Yes. And I have to I have to admit, I'll be called all kinds of chauvinist and all kinds of things in this, but I thought, here it was, there's a lovely little song hmm. yeah. <laughs> that was uh, an excited teenage girl. I said, you know, okay, that's nice. She's just getting all poetic. <laughs> Not really understanding maybe the significance of what she was saying there. All right. The Scottish scholar William Bark actually devotes a lot of thought to what Mary says in this song. Yes, right. And he says that it was revolutionary at three different levels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, And so what does Mr. Barkley, who doesn't blow off teenage girls <laughs> like Pastor Kevin, what does he say these three revolutions are? Okay, Mary speaks of three revolutions being carried out by God through his only begotten son. The okay. first one is a moral revolution. Mm. God scatters the plans of the proud and Christianity is the death of pride. Okay. Second revolution is social revolution. God casts down the mighty and exalts the humble. Mm -hmm. Practice Christianity puts an end to the world's labels and prestige. Mm -hmm. And the third one is an economic revolution. Those who are rich will be sent away empty. Non-Christian society is a society where each person is out to amass as much as they can get. And a Christian mm -hmm. society is a society where every person must get only to give away. Right. So and, and very opposite things. <laughs> and it's prophetic. And mm -hmm. considering the, the, the world in which this young girl lived, to be coming up with a song that is a moral, social, and economic revolution. It's like a, a little manifesto. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, and she's minimal education, you know, right. uh, where she's from. It's pretty safe to surmise this was some pretty divinely inspired uh, uh, words going on here. So right. uh, it's pretty incredible. Being open to what God would say fits with Mary's character. Because... Mm -hmm. If we just look at the first greeting of the angel in Luke 1, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. So, you know. Yeah, it just uh, even in the greeting. And, and as usual, just going back and looking, okay, when the angel said these things, they just kind of roll off our lips now because, you know, 2,000 years of... Uh, people just quoting scripture right. but the term and imagine said in the origin highly favored in the, in the original language the greek that uh it's written in means to endue with honor or to make accepted uh blessed actually is, is two words put together a compound mm. word that means to speak well of in the context of prospering that individual 
So when you have God who is telling you you are like way accepted and <laughs> that you are um, uh, this, this special honor, I mean, that's pretty extraordinary. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we talk about her being an ordinary girl, but the thing is she was a, at least extraordinary in this way. She must have had an incredible level of spiritual integrity going on there. Right, I agree. Uh, before we leave, Mary, let's tackle the big question. Mm. <laughs> was she really a virgin at his birth? Yeah, that's that's kind of a, a really big question. And, and uh, it gets, um, uh, you know, it's been mulled over for centuries and centuries. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, as soon as the second century, there was a philosopher, a Greek philosopher, uh, who claimed that Mary had an affair with a Roman soldier and even offers a name and such. Oh, wow. uh, and he bases his claim on rumors that were propagated by first century Pharisees. Uh, a hmm. second proposal of scripture is that uh, it was simply a figurative uh, declaration. It was just um, poetic in this way, is that the ancient Hebrew had a saying that the conception of a child was actually... Uh, the involvement of three people, the mother, the father, and the spirit of God. So in that mm -hmm. sense, every child is, is um, you know, conceived in the Holy Spirit. So Except mm. it doesn't fit since Joseph was about to divorce Mary. So he, he wasn't thinking poetically. <laughs> he wasn't thinking. About, he wasn't making up poems. And if he was, they weren't, <laughs> they weren't nice ones. Yep. Uh, but the description... Uh, of Christ's birth too, it, the way it's described, the mm -hmm. the 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 very special uh, annunciation with the Holy Spirit, is foundational to Christianity. If you yes. lose this, you've lost Christianity altogether. Yeah. So when you think of it, though, when you really put the big picture in in into play here, is that Jesus being born? It is an amazing thing. Nobody will doubt that. It's never happened anywhere else in human history. It's absolutely mm -hmm. incredible that uh, Jesus should come from a virgin birth. But that is really small potatoes compared to the big picture, which is of an infinite God somehow took on a finite human form. Yeah. Uh, the, the second part of it is pretty small next to that. Bottom line we're getting at here is if God came into the world, you know, if he came in uh, in this incredible way, born as a child and just growing up, uh, became human flesh, it's this happened or it didn't happen at all. Right. It's, it's we have to believe the package or you don't believe the package. We'll say it's up to you. Mm -hmm. But the one thing we can't do is have some mushy, halfway compromise. It, right. it, it either happened this way or it didn't happen at all. Exactly. Okay, we spent a lot of time on Mary. Um, here's my suggestion. Let's cover the next person and then continue the rest of the top five next yeah, week. Yeah, because I think what we'll, we'll find is the first two, and I bet <laughs> everybody out there is guessing, yeah, we know who's coming next. <laughs> but the first two we spent a lot of time on uh, and then the next three, there some of them are unexpected, what we really know about them. And uh, we'll get through them in fairly quick succession and cover three next week. So that being said, since we're only covering one more, the number two person would be... Joseph! Oh, what a surprise. Dad. <laughs> yeah. Our our Bible reference for Joseph is a summary of Matthew 1, 18-25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows... After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being just a man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife. Okay, so in that passage, even a summary uh, in that you wrote, there's a number of loaded terms in there, just little vignettes that 
give us a pretty good idea of who Joseph was. For example. Well, this is where we were joking earlier. It's amazing where a word can go. It's just like, uh, if you say he was a just man or he was just, just a man. man. <laughs> yeah. But the fact is, I guess we look at both. But uh, of course, and here it says a just man. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know, but I always thought was an interesting word to use there. Uh, because by law, there was a number of, there was quite a gamut that that he could do. Everything from he could um, do it quietly, like he said, or even <laughs> call for her execution. <laughs> right. So uh, justice, using the term just is an interesting one. But in, in the original Greek, the uh, translation, or one of them, because of course there's several uh, variations that can be there, but Strong's Concordance puts uh, one one of those this way. Uh, it says, used of him who was of thinking, feeling, and acting, uh, uh, whose, who's, let me rephrase this because I just butchered it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It says, used of him whose way of thinking, feeling, and acting is wholly conformed to the will of God. Thinking, feeling, and mm -hmm. acting is wholly conformed to the will of God. In other words, innocent righteous, virtuous, and guiltless. Wow. It's a great parallel to Mary, though, because yeah. he was open to God and whatever God wanted. Uh, and there you go. There seems to be that golden thread that goes right. through this whole thing. The one thing they were extraordinary is how they listened to God. There's a yeah. lesson in there. Yeah, sure um, <laughs> so in the fact, like we were saying, it was, was Joseph just an ordinary guy? Yeah. Uh, you know, we'd say, like we said, just an ordinary working Joe or whatever in every way, except for this, is that like Mary, he was entirely open to uh, what the, the Lord would call them to do. Mm -hmm. So in the world's eyes, yeah, very ordinary, nothing special about them. The extraordinary thing was something only God could see, which was in the heart. Uh, and this idea of being honestly open to God, honestly. Mm -hmm. Totally open to God is extremely rare. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we got down Joseph was a godly man, but mm -hmm. who exactly was Joseph to Mary? Let's look uh, at that. Yeah, well, let, let, let's let do. <laughs> and I'll tell you why, because most people in our culture like us, they fall in love, and then they get married, and then they're, you know, carry on. So we're used to uh, this <laughs> carry on. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> but... Uh, we're used to this thing that's just totally our own volition, our own will and whatever. But in the ancient Middle East, it worked in phases, if you will. Like for a start, say two families get along really well. They take their little ones. Uh, they take their little ones and say, hey, how about my boy marry your girl? Hey, sounds good. So they would promise their children to each other, at which case these little children, just little boys and girls, were... Uh, technically, they were engaged hmm. to each other, so they use the word differently that way. So uh, that, but all it really meant is they were really promised to each other, and as they approached adulthood, right. um, they were able to, or they had the right to refuse this engagement. Uh, it could be annulled at that case, you know, breaking the promise. Like they, they grow hmm. up, and and she looks at him and go, "You ugly." <laughs> <laughs> but would, they, would there have been a lot of, um, you know, their families, would they be upset? And would there be a well, lasting, I, you know? I think we have to put ourselves in their sandals, so to speak, <laughs> is is that, well, say, uh, I'm just trying to, uh, you know, conjecture here, but say two families stop getting along, maybe they would annul it. Mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, you never know. Maybe it was especially the woman who had the right more than the man in this. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, interesting enough. Yeah. And and I think the idea was that if, if they grew up and the son turned out to be, if we used a common term, like he's a real loser, mm. you know, for some reason she was really not happy. She would um, refuse the the engagement. It would hmm. be broken off. But it could be annulled. There would probably be hard feelings, but there was no legal recourse. Mm -hmm. The yeah. next stage was if they did get older and they were at that age of decision, which was actually over 13. I mean, just like oh, today, no, uh, adulthood was 13, right? Mm -hmm. Bar mitzvah and, 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 and such. Um, but um, 
at this point, if they agreed, then they were not just engaged, they were now betrothed. Yeah. Uh, and, and this was serious. This was um, an official step into marriage. As a matter of fact, there was all the aspects of marriage, the rights, right. she carried his name, all of that uh, was now in force, was legally binding. Mm -hmm. uh, everything except the, the fun stuff. <laughs> Uh, and that the was on. <laughs> the carrying on, as we said, quote unquote. Uh, but and the reason for that was they met all the aspects of man's law. But to procreate, that had to be when it was officially recognized before God, mm -hmm. which would then take you to phase three of the relationship. And the final step. Yeah, da, here da, here da. comes the bride. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Joseph was in phase two. Right? There you go. So it's no wonder that he was so crushed at first. Yeah, that that was tantamount to your wife cheating on you even before you had a chance <laughs> oh, to, to, to 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 know her. So Okay, yeah. so here's the next obvious question. All right. Who was Joseph to Jesus? After all, for Jesus, the claim to King David's bloodline comes through Joseph. Yeah, and once again, in the same way people may find some confusion in the whole marriage thing, we could find confusion here because unlike them, we're all about this equal rights thing. But they were, uh, whether we approve or not, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a strongly patriarchal society. The guys ruled. <laughs> well, I, I, everything was based in through there. So right. we have to see through their filters. We have to look at the whole situation through their cultural rules. Right. Now, Mary and Joseph were, as we already understood from the three facing, they were effectively married even as she was, you know, found with child. Mm -hmm. So um, by law and by culture, Jesus, by the time, this is ingenious when you really think of it, how it fits. Yeah. By the time Jesus is born, he is legally and culturally understood to be the son of Joseph. Hmm. And as, as you were saying, the entire line of, of Joseph is David, and that, that's very important in mm -hmm. the prophecy. Uh, but, you know, I'm thinking of God working this out. Is this, How do we have someone born of a perfect perfect human born through the Holy Spirit uh, and, and that way not involving the man, but yet follow the man's bloodline in this? <laughs> and this is how it's answered. And Scripture doesn't make any apology for this at all. It's um, when you read through Scripture, when it's talking in a worldly sense, Joseph is the father. And when you're talking in a theological sense, then God yeah. is the Father. So, yeah. yeah. It's just amazing, the whole picture that God had all, you know, laid out in his mind and working it out through this, this you know, yeah, well, centuries. <laughs> yeah. yeah, something that would be confusing until you saw it unfold. So no wonder yeah. Mary was pondering in her heart, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, both Matthew and Luke follow the answers ancestry of Jesus, and both do it from Joseph's bloodline without explanation or apology, apology like you said. said yeah. So obviously that's the way they understood the lineage of mm -hmm. Jesus. Another question that comes up is, was Joseph a younger or older man in this arrangement? And this I, I did not realize. I just thought yeah. one way. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. All the older guys like to think it was a, <laughs> it was an older, he got an, a, a younger bride. Uh, but but the truth is here here here's a way to to, to consider because we're not really told that mm. scripture points out that uh, in the latter days Joseph wasn't around. It's very clear Mary was on her own there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that is that why they that just assumed he was older. Because, uh, yes, yeah. and the assumption is well he's not there, and then the traditional assumption became uh, that he was older. Now that is a possibility, uh, but. Here's the thing, it would be the exception, not the rule, as in Joseph married uh, at the proper age like everyone else did, uh, but his wife died, and then now he's a widower. We're mm. never told that, but I mean, that could be an assumption. Mm -hmm. The rule at the time would be this, just like Mary was being married as a teen, Husbands were also in that young age as well. Young people married each other mm. uh, for the most part. Uh, anything else was something of an exception. So it's very possible that Joseph was a teenager 
at the same age as Mary, we, we all we know for sure is something happened and he's simply not alive in the latter years of Jesus' uh, life. Wow. So the bottom line, it's possible Joseph was older, but the odds would say that he was somewhere around Mary's age. Yeah. I mean, if you were to hedge a bet, it's probably closer that he was young. Yeah. One of our favorite sites, God Quest Got questions.com mm -hmm. adds a few other insights about the kind of person Joseph was. Mm -hmm. He was a humble man. He was willing to obey God in taking Mary, even in the appearance of her infidelity. Yeah, and, and like I don't think we can totally stress mm -hmm. that that level of humility, uh, you know, that would be something in our time. In his day, it would have been absolutely scandalous. Uh, it would be like, man, what a what a sucker you pulled this that you went in for this. Yeah. So uh, the humility involved would have been absolutely incredible. And he was self-sacrificing. He could have gone as far as having, like we talked, Mary stoned. Mm -hmm. But even in his anguish, he settled on doing it quietly. Yeah, that's a big deal. Now you brought up a good point. I never really thought of you. Said, mm -hmm. You were asking, did they know each other? Would were they friends? In a and as children, of course, as they get older, they would they formalize a bit. But that's a if their parents knew each other enough to promise their children, mm -hmm. good chance that yeah, Mary Mary was a childhood friend. You know, yeah. that's that's a really good. Uh, uh, and he was yeah. accepting. Joseph was yes. accepting. He trained Jesus in his own trade. He had Jesus known as his own son, mm -hmm. and he did everything he could to embrace the place of Jesus in his family. Mm -hmm. So, bottom line, Joseph was God's man long before he was Christ's father. <laughs> yeah, and that, I mean, that's a, that's a, there's a line to stop and ponder mm -hmm. that you said there is uh, that Joseph was a man of God before he was essentially God's father. Right. So God was his father before he was God's father. Yeah. That's kind of, again, it's mind bending there. <laughs> uh, and, and in fact, though. That is a major point, I think, that's being made through this story, hmm. is who these people were like that. Right. Um, so this week we've begun our dive into the top five people in mm -hmm. the Christmas account. Yep. So there's some background. There's some background <laughs> on yeah. two important lives, Mary right. and Joseph. Mary and Joseph. Next week we'll conclude with the and, final and, three of uh, our... Right. And it's, it's the typical mean to be continued is we're not even going to let people know... <laughs> who we're going to talk about, and they might be surprised. I'll have to kind of tune in and find yeah, out. And I don't know yet either. No, you will. As you we will. celebrate this Christmas, let's be ever grateful for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That That is the real reason. Mm -hmm. And staying in with the Christmas spirit of things, Cain and Praise team is going to be singing a medley of Christmas classics. So enjoy, and until next week, be blessed.
Watch Word for the Week at CanaanCommunity.org. You can also catch our live stream on Canaan Community's Facebook, YouTube, or your favorite podcast app.